Hey everyone, my name is Delana Burns and I'm with you tonight on Live with Prima. I want to share a crafty stitching project that I've created. I'm going to kind of go over this one with you tonight. Uh, see, we got lot, I'm, I'm the wrong side, lots of stitching and we've used stencils, uh, beautiful flowers, some uh, micro beads just to make this really pretty. And uh, I've got a few more that I want to show you for a few more ideas, too, that you can use the resist canvas that Prima makes and lots of other things. So first, I want to go over the announcements. Next show is going to be Frank Garcia. Uh, he's going to be making a gorgeous box for you to keep all your pretty trinkets in. And uh, that show is Tuesday, August 11th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So, uh, also make sure if you've not done it to sign up for Art Venture Canada and Art Venture Anaheim. Edmonton uh, in September 2015 and Anaheim, California, January of 2016. And I wish I was going to both. Um, they are going to be really fun, uh, filled with great teachers and awesome classes, and of course, beautiful Prima products. So. You can't go wrong. So sign up. Uh, Carrie will put the link up. Uh, I think I actually wrote it down. It's primamarketinginc.com slash artventure. Um, but I'm sure Carrie will give y'all the link too. So if you haven't signed up and you want to, go and do that. Um, so what to do first. I think maybe I'm going to show you these first kind of upright. This is the one we're going to be working on tonight. And um, you can see, again, the, the stenciling that we've done. I've used stencils for the color and also for the stitching. Um, also, I've created a few more that you may have seen online. I actually did these three. You can see I did these with paper. These embroidery hoops, they're small, but they've been filled with paper. And um, you can see I've added some stitching and some really pretty embellishments. Let's put this one up right. Some really pretty embellishments um, on these. And um, I'll give you another look before the show's over with these kind of pan down. Um, this one is done with the Prima burlap, 12 by 12 burlap. And you can see I did the circle stitching and I wrote the word beautiful and just stitched around it, just sort of freehanded the word. And this is just a couple of uh, vine flowers added, just glued on with some of Frank's really pretty uh, beads. And I am going to go ahead and pan this down. I am terrible at showing these to you upright. So let me go ahead and turn you around. Y'all bear with me just a second. I think it's going to be easier to show you these uh, like this. So let's do it this way. Kind of straighten my camera out. Okay, so you can see them. I've also done this one. This one is made with felt. I just um, encased the felt. And this is a, a little plastic embroidery hoop. And I went in with one of uh, Prima stencils and just caught just a few of the... Um, little lines here to give you sort of a broken chevron pattern a uh, little piece of ribbon and glued on a little um, flare and it just makes a just really cute little idea for these little broadery hoops also this one I used a uh, Prima stencil again this is a um, and I was going to write the number down and I did not but anyway this is like a diamond shape uh, couple of stencils that Prima has done with this shape, a couple of flowers, and just a Prima word glued on here with a little piece of ribbon, easy peasy. This one, I've used Jamie's, um, one of Jamie's stencils that had the words on it, and I traced the stencil and um, actually sewed on top of it for the word joy. This is Resist Canvas here that I sprayed with the Sunshine Bloom Spray. And a few flowers, a little stitched heart, and uh, with the leftover um, resist canvas I had, I colored with the uh, teal colored bloom spray and then sewed, just kind of free-handed the little hearts around that with one of the little flowers. 
This also is resist canvas, and uh, I didn't do any sewing on this one. I thought the resist was just so pretty in this damask. I cut a uh, word from a die, and um, this is chipboard from the butterfly collection, and then just a few flowers from my stash that I had not used, and I didn't even color the actual embroidery hoop itself. But this, these just make really pretty wall art. Um, this one here, you can see I used a little bit of uh, the brown ink, uh, one of Prima's chalk edgers in brown, to color the, um, I'm losing my words, to actually color the hoop itself. So just a few ideas of um, a few more things you can do with these. And real quick, I'll show you these three. I kind of like making them in sets. So you can see these three um, with the three different papers. And I used a six by six paper pad. This was... Um, I believe this is this is a which something blue. This was the collection something blue, so you can see just a little bit of stenciling and stitching and um, metal flowers. Uh, those are some wood icons, and you are good to go. So back to our project for tonight. I want to make sure we're pretty close, so I'm going to bring you down some. Want to be sure you can see everything I'm doing. I've worked ahead, but I want to kind of show you the process of this. Starts off with some, uh, and you can use lots of fabric. With this particular one, I wanted it white, and I happen to have some of this on hand. This is the cross stitch fabric that you can pick up at your hobby store or Walmart or wherever. And if anybody's got any questions, um, Carrie will text me and let me know. So we're going to lay our project off to the side. Kind of lay it up here out of our way. And embroidery hoops come in lots of styles and colors now. You can get them in oval shapes. And I found them in a, like a rectangle shape. This is a pretty large one. And it's plastic. It's already colored. So you can see you can get them in different, different sizes and also in colors, which I love. You don't even have to worry about uh, painting the wood or anything like that so um, I like that idea I just wanted to show you a few more these are the wooden ones these are the way they come you see them in most most stores just like this hanging there um, you can color them which I have done I used the um, chalk edger in uh, a kind of a purple color to actually color this particular one and this is the one I'm going to kind of demonstrate uh, how to load if you've never done it, um, you just want to kind of unscrew your little latch here. Not all the way. You don't want it to come all the way. It sort of spreads out when you do that. And you can see it's going to kind of come like this. So you unscrew it so that you can stretch it apart. And um, open up your fabric here. And you're going to see you're going to have these fold lines, but that's okay. We're going to stretch those out lay your your solid round without the screw in it on your table kind of turn this over to to um, get it in there and I'm, it's kind of hanging up here hold on with me just a second not quite sure why it's hanging up you want to spread that out and you're just going to kind of push it down kind of push it down and work it around Work it around, kind of turn it upside down if you need to. Takes just a minute. This fabric is pretty stiff, so you want to kind of work that in just about like that. And once I get it in, I take my scissors, I hold it down, and I take my scissors, and I leave myself a good bit, but I cut off the excess. You can maneuver it a little better if you don't have all that excess fabric. So kind of turn it over and um, tighten your screw. Just kind of tighten it down, holding it down for just a minute. If you've got time, uh, you can dampen this just a little, and that kind of helps um, with the stiffness, kind of get it in. But um, anyway, I just kind of work it in. I, I rarely wet it. I just, I sort of just kind of work it in. And then to get your creases out, you can kind of see the creases there. You want to just pull it tight, sort of be sure you've got that push down. 
and just pull all the way around pulling it really tight I'm not going to go to a lot of pains with this one for times for time's sake tonight but uh, you kind of get the just to get your your crease out and trust me the entire crease will come out if it bothers you before you put it in you are welcome to give it a quick iron I'm going to go in now and just kind of trim more of the fabric off just so I don't have so much to contend with on the outside and I just kind of cut it around in a circular motion here and I want to leave a good bit because what you want when you're finished you want to be able to kind of pull it over in the back and um, glue this down out of your way so you want to leave enough that you can kind of pull it over and again once you get it this short you can continue to maneuver it so it's really good so while I'm working with it I leave it kind of flat this is not as tight as I would normally get it but um, you, you get the just you will just continue to stretch it until you pull these creases out what I want to do now is go ahead and show you the stencils that I've used this is um, and of course I did not write the numbers down Carrie I hope you have these numbers available because I did not write them on there I don't have the packaging um, but I've used these two here and they both are uh, floral rose I believe and floral I think they're called but anyway they were from a couple of CHAs ago and they just have really pretty words and these gorgeous roses uh, and these really pretty you see these really pretty flowers here so that's what we're going to kind of use but what I want to touch on first here is my little word section what I did and you can see there the words are right there there they are what I did is grab the pencil and I just I just sort of eyeballed the word live is going to be added last because I'm going to kind of move it above the beautiful but just like it is I just sort of lined it up and just kind of eyeballed it lined it up with my with my fabric I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the actual holes in the um, fabric here you can do that this does have actual grid holes for cross stitch but um, I didn't I didn't actually go by the holes I just sort of used this as fabric so either way you want to do it but what you want to do, once you get it lined up kind of where you want it, you just want to draw inside the stencil. Just kind of trace right inside the stencil. And I'm not going to do the entire thing for time, but you'll totally get the gist of what I'm doing here. And I'm just, just literally following the stencil with my pencil. Get the little comma. My pencil's not real dark, so I'm doing a couple of runs over it to kind of get that in there. This And this also works really good, like on a scrapbook page. Uh, you don't even have to um, sew it. You could actually use this as a guide to uh, draw the word on your page, or draw the phrase, rather, on your page with a pen. You could use a Sharpie. You could use uh, one of Prima's new... Um, markers would work really well with this just kind of color it in like that and of course always you could spray this you know you could use it like a like a stencil with the um, with the sprays just like a normal stencil but it works really well to trace too with a pen or a pencil so um, and I guess I am just going to go ahead and draw the whole thing I said it wasn't but I'm so close I'm just going to go ahead and finish And you can kind of see, I'm not getting every single little line. There's, I don't want these letters to really be perfect. So I'm just going to kind of hit the high spots just so I can kind of tell. And can you see what we've got there? See how easy that comes off with the pencil? And then we're going to use that as our guide just to go right on top of. Then I want to go back with the word live. And I want to stack it right on top of the word beautiful just to give this a little bit more room and um, so it didn't run off the edge there so just going to go in 
with the word live. This is really fast, really easy, and I lost my pencil in, and I think it's just really fun. I love adding the, the stitching and the, the word phrases. Uh, it's really easy, but it looks like you've gone to a lot of trouble for this detail, and um, it's just really an easy process. The next thing I did for stitching is I did sort of a half circle here with a few little notches in it. The way I achieved that, I just took another kind of smaller sized embroidery hoop. And anything you have round, if you have a bowl or a saucer, if you don't have one that's smaller. And I just kind of started just right above the L and just drew a quick half circle just right up to the top. Flowers are going to kind of cover that. But you can see just easy peasy right there. If you want to go ahead and do your um, your little notches here, I, I kind of like this little idea. Um, you can go ahead and kind of draw those in where you want to stitch them. That's totally, totally up to you. I don't think I did. I think I just eyeballed it and went for it. But that's sort of what you're going to get right there. Just, just like so. Next thing I want to show you is the embroidery floss, which is really, really easy. A lot of times on scrapbook pages, I'll use all six strands. You get six strands with each, um, with each cut of floss. And I want to pull a little bit out, a little more than a, than a yard, maybe 24 inches to a yard is what I like to work with so that it doesn't get tangled as you're working. These strands kind of separate. And if I wasn't on camera, they would separate a lot quicker. You want to pull them out one at a time. We're going to pull one and two. We're going to pull three for this because we want to do this three, three strands thick. And I like the idea of using just the three strands on this one. I wanted it a little more delicate. I didn't want it quite so thick. It's easier when you're doing um, letters to do them a little thinner. When you start getting such thick pieces of floss, uh, you sort of lose your um, you lose your detail in your in your words. So um, then you just want to pick these back up, put them together. And again, y'all, I'm telling you, I do this much better when I'm not on camera. So just put these together. So now you've got two separate pieces you can use. You can use this one and you can use the three strands that you have left. Kind of cut this off. I just cut that off with my scissors. I'm using my, my fabric scissors um, for this. I use embroidery needles. They have a little bit um, a little bit bigger opening, a little bit bigger eye. Can you kind of see that? Um, so th these are just embroidery needles. I pick them up at Walmart or um, Hobby Lobby, wherever. I'm going to go ahead and thread this, and let's see if I can thread this on camera. Just probably know I'm having to um, having to bite it with my teeth a little bit to get it to stay together. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Uh, normally, I don't tie a knot, um, but tonight I am just going to go ahead and tie a knot so we can get started on the end. I'll usually just leave a little piece sort of hanging, and then I'll just try to catch it so that the back looks a little neater. But what we're going to start off with these with these words. And I'm just going to just do the word live first. And I just go in behind and I just kind of feel with my finger. You can see back here there's nothing back there, but I'm just kind of feeling with my finger kind of where the L begins. And this was the knotting that I was talking about because sometimes it likes to kind of knot on you. So and then I just want to go the whole length of this L here down and then just go back in. Then I want to go over to this side here of the L and up. And you can see it's just an in and out. And it does take a few minutes. It's not really really a fast process. I'm, I've done it for so long. I'm, I'm really quick um, to start off with. You might be a little slower. But it is so worth the process. You will see. I don't have a dot there, but I'm just going to kind of, going to kind of improvise and do a little dot above the eye. The letters are not going to be perfect. I don't want them perfect. Um, 
because I just think it just adds to the character of it and the idea that it's hand done if they're not completely perfect. So, and don't worry, we're not going to sew all of this tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to give you this word and then we're going to move on and, um, do, um, the rest of what we got to do. We got to stencil some ink and we've got flowers and microbeads. We've got a few other processes to, um, get this done, but you can see I'm just basically following the lines that I drew to get this in here. And I can't see what y'all are saying. Um, somebody said something about a French knot. A French knot took me forever to learn how to do. And then once I learned how to do it, it's like so simple to me now. But it did take me, it did take me a while to learn. But I love a French knot. I did a apron for CHA. And one of the little, uh, I did the Julie Nutting dolls on the apron. And I gave one of the little girls curly hair. And I did French knots all over her head. So I know how to do a French knot now well because I did um, I did so many on her hair. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just kind of leave that. And what you want to do with your, with your thread, once you're done with your word, if you're finished, just kind of run your needle up under a few stitches and pull this. And that sort of holds that down. And you can cut that off. I don't cut it off until I've finished going down and doing as many words as I can with the amount of thread I have. But just wanted to kind of show you how you finish that. Um, the circle or the half circle there that's going around the side, same thing. I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches of that for you. Um, you just want to kind of feel with your finger and use your finger kind of under there as a guide as to where to get started. You want to go in. You can do as long a stitches as you'd like to kind of fill this up. And I just, I do a couple around the, around the actual arch. And then I go back and kind of catch my, my little, I don't even know what to call them. Anyway, the little, the little extra pieces I have, they look like little, almost like little tree limbs. So you just want to kind of catch those. And it's just an in and out motion. Um, and it really does go pretty fast. And it does require just a little bit of practice to get some speed. But you will be so happy with the results when you're done. So we're going to move on. And um, through the, um, I guess, creativity of television, we have one almost completely finished. I've already done the stitching. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to cough. Um, so I want to grab my needle and just kind of finish this one up. I could have actually done my circle here, but I just want to kind of finish up this stitching that I started. And you can see with this one, I didn't do my little, my little dashes out to the side yet. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball those. And uh, I want to do this just to show you just how fast it can be because it's, um, it's fast and it can be a labor of love. It honestly can it can be so much fun and so relaxing. It's, it's kind of like fussy cutting. You either love it or you hate it, but the results are just so rewarding and they look so pretty on your pages. So um, y'all have to try this if you haven't already or go back to it if you've not done it in a long time because it is, um, it's one of my loves. So I'm just going to kind of make my way up and around here with these little these little twigs or whatever you call them and you'll see when you're kind of holding this the fabric loosened just a little bit but the beauty of leaving these edges here you'll be able to tighten that right back up so I'm just finishing this up and y'all see how fast this is I promise you this is a fast process really quick just Get it up there. And I'm not worrying about the holes. I'm just kind of using this as fabric. I'm not, I'm not concerned about um, how many I have or making it the same as the other one. I'm just, I just kind of like this little accent. 
for a few more stitches. So that is it. That is it for our little half circle. So what you want to do is go up under a few of your stitches. And since this is a straight line, I'm just going to kind of do it a couple of times. Maybe even tie a little knot. We're pretty close to the edge here, so you just want to be sure that you got that. And you can add a little glue, and that's going to just like knot up. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm in a hurry, so I'm not going to worry so much about it. I'm going to just kind of cut it off and pull my excess, and I'm going to add just a little bit of Fabri-Tac to my finger. I'm hoping my glue cooperates tonight. It's not quite as full as I would like for it to be. Add a little Fabri-Tac to your finger and just sort of put it right on top of these stitches. And that seals it right down so it's not going to go anywhere. You can see that seals it right down. You're good to go. So Now I want to move on to our colored stenciling. I'm going to tighten this back up. You can see I got a little bit of looseness there, so I'm just going to pull it through and tighten it up just a little bit. Just like so. Okay, and since we're done with the stitching, I'm going to go ahead and keep this like this until I'm finished with the stenciling because we're going to pounce it a little bit and we may loosen it a little bit again. So we've got our words here from our stencil. The next thing I want to do is get a couple of these flowers. And what I'm going to use is some chalk edgers and a little water and a stenciling brush. I've got a really stiff stenciling brush. You could use like a foam brush uh, as long as it stays pretty stiff or just a, just a stiff um, paint brush. Just something that you can kind of stipple with because what I'm going to do is take my ink and put some on my nonstick surface here and I'm going to do both colors. That's kind of, this is a uh, Hydrangea, it's kind of a purple color. And this is Old Rose. And I also, I think I wanted to use Vintage. I'm going to use a Vintage Pink. That's a little bit darker. And I'm going to use the Old Rose. Kind of both colors of that pink. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more of the purple to be sure I have enough of the Hydrangea. Then I'm going to take my water bottle and spray just a little bit of water. Let's move my, move my mouse and my scissors and my pencil, everything out of my way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these flowers and you can see what I've done ahead of time is I've used some masking tape and I've masked off what I don't want to actually um, ink. I just basically want the flower shapes, both, both of these flower shapes. So I've kind of covered the little leaf area, the stem area, and there's these little distressed holes. I've covered those as well because I just want to get the flower image. So what I'm going to do is just kind of turn this until I can get my flower about. And I'm going to start off with this small flower. Okay, the material that I'm using, you're talking about the um, actual um, embroidery. This is, um, this is made for cross-stitching. This is cross-stitch fabric. So you can pick this up in your hobby store. Walmart even sells it. Uh, and it doesn't have to be the cross-stitch fabric. I wanted white, so this was what I had in the house that was white. You can use muslin, um, any kind of, um, of soft, uh, sort of stiffer type fabric for this. So anything you've got that is kind of stiff but still pliable works for this. So what I'm going to do is my rows here, I'm going to kind of put it just around my word about in that area where I want it. And I just want the flower shape so I've masked off that area so I don't get it. Take your, your stenciling brush and pounce it in your water first. Just kind of move the camera over so you can see. Pounce it in the water first, and then I want to touch it in the hydrangea color. 
just place it about where I want it there and just kind of hold it down pretty firm and just stipple your color. And just keep going back in with the water and the um, and the uh, chalk edger, and just continue to pick it up and get it get it in there. You don't want to use a lot of water because you don't want this to spread under. You only want to get your um, flour. You don't want it to be so wet that it's actually running up under your stencil so just be careful not to add too much water and if you do get more than you want grab a wipe I'm just going to grab a baby wipe and just dab off my excess I'm going to go in with a little bit of pink now just going to grab the two pinks kind of together Because I want this kind of multicolored, um, shaded. And again, this is not going to be a perfect image. I don't really want it to be a perfect image because I'm going to go back in with some glass, be or not glass beads, but um, micro beads. And I just want a little bit of all these colors in on this and if you happen to pick up more of the image than you need it or whatever totally okay you can see that's about what we're going to get right there so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to turn it over because i want this flower to kind of go in this other direction to fill up this area right here i've got this one going this way i want this one kind of swooped this way so i'm going to lay my stencil down right about here and the same thing i'm going to go in with a little water Start off with my hydrangea color. Now I'm doing kind of a rubbing motion or a tapping motion to get this on here, so it and it goes on really easy. And this is white, so it shows up really quick. If it was a darker color, um, you know, it would take a few more coats to kind of get it on. But this goes on really easy. So now I want to grab the pink. Grab the darker pink. Just kind of stipple that in. Okay, just about like that is what I want. And I have another stencil here because I wanted a really small flower and that stencil I didn't get that smaller one. I wanted one really small so I'm changing stencils and I'm going to grab this rose right here and I'm going to place it right about there and there's no right or wrong place to put these on what I'm doing is getting it in my I'm getting I'm trying to keep it on camera but I'm trying to keep it out of my my uh, chalk edger that I've got over here so I'm going to do the same thing grab a little water grab a little of the hydrangea and just kind of in a swooping motion get that on there swoop it or pounce it or whatever you need to do to get it on grab a little pink grab a little bit of the darker pink okay and that is it there our flowers are just like that That's all there is to it so let's wash off our brush a little bit with our water in our baby wipe then we want to wipe up our mess okay now what I want to do is tighten my tighten my fabric back up one more time get that really tight so that all the creases and all the excess fabric are kind of pulled and adjusted and this is with any fabric you're using. Felt works really good for this. Um, felt might be a little bit more difficult to color. You might have to do a few extra coats, but felt would be really pretty with this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to kind of turn my fabric in to kind of finish this fabric off because I want to do this before I get my flower arrangement on there. So just kind of turn this in. 
like so. And I'm going to add some glue. I'm going to add some Fabri-Tac right to the actual inside of the embroidery hoop. And I'm going to glue this in place. And this just finishes the edge. Another really good idea to do with this is like a frame. You could actually insert this in a, in a photo frame. You could glue it right to the photo frame and still be able to pull it pretty tight. Uh, you could use a staple gun or something to kind of get it in there. But uh, a frame would be beautiful for this as well. If you didn't, you wanted to go a little bit more decorative than the embroidery hoop itself. Um, that would be really pretty. You could paint the frame any color to match. So I'm just going to kind of lay this in. It takes just a second for this to dry. Once this is dried um, really good, I'll go back in and cut the fabric pretty close to the edge. But for the show, for time purposes, I'm not going to do that. But just know that I normally go back in and kind of cut that. You can always cut it. If you want this finished and covered, you can cut a circle of fabric or a circle of like cardboard or decorative paper of sorts and glue back here to totally hide all of this. If you want that finished looking on the back, doesn't really bother me to see the stitching. But if you did want it finished, that is certainly an option for you. Just like so. And there you see that's, the that looks pretty just like that, but we have to have flowers. So I'm going to do our flower arrangement now. And you can see on this one, these flowers are from the Royal Menagerie. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, brand new collection. Are they not beautiful? Look at the pretty leaves and uh, these gorgeous centers on these. And this little cabbage rose. I love these flowers. These are some of my all-time favorite Prima flowers. This pretty one with a little yellow center. Um, Y'all are going to love these. I can't wait until you get your hands on them. Uh, I just wanted to point out too on my embroidery hoops. This one is a wood. I used a plastic hoop on this one. I found a purple one. I didn't have another one so I actually painted this embroidery hoop with a folk art paint. It, um, it's kind of a metallic plum color. Uh, it just matched really well so you can use um, paint or whatever to color your your uh, hoops as well. So flowers, flowers, and more flowers. Okay, here they are. Look at this. Oh my word. They are beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So we're going to start off with this pack. It's Royal, Men Royal Menagerie number 583309. And I want to get Let's just take them all out of the pack. Look at them. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. They are so pretty. Now these little cabbage roses, they flatten out a little bit in the packaging. So you need to manipulate these kind of back, kind of scrooge them back up into the shape of, because I love cabbage roses. And so I love that Prima made cabbage roses. So you just kind of smush them back with your fingers and you get this beautiful cabbage rose. Just one petal at a time if you need to, but they're so pretty. They're so dainty and so pretty. I love them. And I like to have a few of these outside leaves or outside little uh, petals kind of away from the flower so that it draws more interest to that beautiful center. So that's our, that's our little cabbage rose. We're gonna use that one and we're going to use this one. And I'm just manipulating them all. They get kind of flattened out in the packaging. So I want to want to fluff them or floof them or whatever you say. Whatever word you use. We just want them fluffed. Use that one. And this beautiful purple plum color. Oh my gosh. And these gray centers just make them pop. Absolutely pretty. Can you see the scalloped edge? See how scallopy the edge is? Oh my gosh. They're so pretty, y'all. Going to use him. Going to kind of get our little design going there. Then I'm going to grab this one. So we're going to use four out of that one pack. And see, he's kind of smushed, but I'm going to I'm going to kind of work him out and fix him back up. 
look how look how the edges of this one is scalloped too. There's they're so detailed. They are so pretty. So we got that one. And then this pack here, this is also Royal Menagerie 583330. And I just need one out of here. I just wanted this one with this pretty, this pink one with this pretty yellow center. This one comes with, and I've cut some of this apart. This comes with little berries and it comes with um, these little ones on these little wires as well. So pretty. Prima has outdone themselves times 10 on flowers. Absolutely gorgeous. So we want to floof him just a little bit too. We want him right about there. Then I'm going to grab the leaves. Um, these comes, these, this pack comes with the berry twigs and the leaves. Number 583361. And I just want to grab the leaves. I need three. I need this purpley one. Oh, I'm losing my beads. Hold on. I'm losing my berries. And another purpley one and this pink one. Here, this darker pink color. So there's a green and that teal, sort of blue teal. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. So keep this package all together. So this is what we're going to do for our cluster and I'm just going to start kind of gluing these down so easy to make a beautiful cluster with these they cluster so well together um, you could use just one pack and have the most beautiful cluster or mix them like I'm doing here and have an even prettier cluster so I'm just going to kind of lay these down I'm going to do the flowers before I do the leaves and I kind of wanted it to go down. Y'all know, I guess I always sort of trickle my flowers kind of down. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. I want to make sure I'm kind of in my center. And do our beautiful little cabbage rows. And once the glue dries, you'll be able to kind of floof him up a little bit more. Just about like so. This one, love that little yellow center. That's just so, it's so dainty. Can you tell it's yellow? I can't tell if you can tell it's yellow or not. But anyway, it's a yellow center. So kind of layer him right about there. We want our cabbage rows. I'm going to add a little more glue. We want our cabbage rows to kind of stand up away from the group because I want it obvious that it's a little cabbage rows. Kind of like so. Tuck that one in right about there. And then we're just going to add our leaves. They've got beautiful glitter. You see the little glittered tips. And what I like to do with my leaves, because I don't like them flat, I want to grab my, my tiny attacher here. And I just want to give them a quick pinch and add a little staple. And I'm doing this with my little tiny attacher, but you could, you could actually glue these. So I'm just going to kind of pinch and add a little staple. This is really quick. And... Um, to me, this gives them a more natural look. I don't think leaves are flat in nature, so I don't like them flat when I use them. I don't use leaves a lot, but when I do, I pinch them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two small ones, and I'm going to actually going to staple these together because I'm going to use them together, and that makes it a little bit easier. Place them kind of like I want them. I want one kind of um, one kind of shorter than the other, sort of like that. So I'm just going to staple those. I'm going to add a little glue. And I should have a new bottle of glue. It's taking the glue forever to get to the bottom. Or I just need to leave it laying on its side. Then it'll go oozing everywhere. So I'm just going to kind of tuck these in right about here. And then I want to add a little glue to the back of my purple one here and I want to tuck it kind of right in and behind here just kind of move these petals out of your way and just get that in there just about like that and that is it for our for our cluster that's kind of that's kind of what I wanted for our cluster it just sort of runs down um, and lays on top of the flowers that are already there and our last and final touch 
I want to use some micro beads. I'm going to use micro beads in blush and micro beads in berry. And uh, I would read these numbers, but uh, I would have to put my glasses on, and they are across the room. So I hope Carrie has the numbers to those two little bottles. And I like to use felt for the beads, so I've got a couple of pieces of felt here. So I'm going to lay my project on top of the felt. And for this particular one, I want to use glossy accents um, because it's got the little, the little, and I keep a pin in my glossy accent so that it doesn't clog. But it, because it's got this little pointy dispenser here, I want to be able to kind of follow the lines. So I'm just going to kind of follow the lines on a few of my petals, kind of on the outside of the petals. Can you kind of see, uh, and probably you can't until I add the beads, but I'm just going to follow the actual lines of a few of these. Not all of them. I'm not going not gonna to worry about doing it all. And I'm kind of just doing like the outside edge and kind of in and around because you just want this kind of accented and it looks really pretty when it's done. It just makes these roses pop and um, adds tons of dimension because this glossy accents is really kind of standing up. So just continue to add. And I did this last because I didn't want to have to wait for it to dry. So um, this was done very last. So we are almost done. This is this project is almost completed. So I'm gonna get a little bit right here, maybe a little bit right here. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is add my. Uh, this is the berry. This is the, well, I've actually got the, I've got the lids mixed up. This is blush. It's the pink. Berry is going to be the purple. So I want to add my purple first. And what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit out in my hand so that I can pinch it up and, um, add it. And I'm going to mix these, so I'm going to do a little bit of both. But I'm going to change my felt before I change colors so that I can preserve my leftover beads. These beads go a long way if you, if you don't throw them out. And I like the felt because they don't roll everywhere. I put them, they're in this, like this Tupperware lid here. And um, when I put them onto the felt, they don't go everywhere. The felt sort of catches them. As you can see, you see, can you see those, those beads? They look, they just look so pretty. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fold this in. Once you get it on the felt, you can just kind of fold it in. And if you need to change colors, you can just kind of fold this up out of your way and move it. And then you can go back to that to pour back into your bottle as soon as you're finished. So now we're going to go to a different piece of felt here because we're going to add our pink. And what I'm going to do is just like pour the pink because I want them a little bit heavier. Just a little bit heavier than I did the berry color. I want more pink than I did purple. So just sort of pour these out. And all over. like that and then just kind of tap it onto your felt and just kind of tap it onto your felt we're missing just a few you can kind of see when you go when you get done you can see where you're missing a few areas so let's go back and add add just a little bit more detail to this flower And I'm good with just the pink on this one, I'm not worrying about the berry color. But you can see 
you can see once this dries it is it is just really pretty it takes it takes a minute to pull its dimension once that glossy accents dries you'll get a um, kind of a more matte type finish just lay that to the side and grab our original and you can kind of see there's our original there's our one we made tonight so maybe a little bit of difference but um, overall pretty much the same project so I want to um, what time do we have well I'm a few minutes early oh my goodness Carrie I'm actually a few minutes early I see Sharon hey Sharon oh my gosh hey Mecco who else is here I can actually read the chat so I'm gonna pan y'all up bear with me one second pan you up I'm back <laughs> So that was good. That was fast. See how fast I did that stitching? I know I didn't do it all on camera, but you can kind of get the gist of this and uh, how fast it can be. And I really do hope y'all will try it. I hope you will fall in love with stitching. I want to do a few more projects in the future, uh, some scrappy projects and stuff. I'm going to start trying to integrate more of my stitching. So I hope y'all really do learn to love it because I do. So, um... That's it for my show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off a few minutes early. So y'all have a great night. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to join Frank on Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific time. And if you have not signed up for Art Venture, go sign up for Art Venture. I wish I was going. Um, anyway, y'all have a great night. Thanks a lot for joining me. Bye now.